approach your government is taking isn't working. Um, Dr. Shane Reddy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's a pleasure to rise and support the estimates. And in this contribution, I'd like to focus on what was a substantive discussion in the estimates, which was around mental health and talk about indeed mental health and talk about some of the initiatives that we're undertaking with the 224 million that's been appropriated in this budget. 224 million that's looking to deal with the increasing burden of mental health. We know that 50% of all New Zealanders at some point in their lifetime will have a mental health issue and that in any one year, 25% will have a diagnosable mental health condition. So if we break that 224 million down, we see 100 million going to DHBs, ring fence like the old Mason uh, money used to be, uh, 100 million to social investment program, and 24 million to cross-agency initiatives, which includes MSD, corrections, and uh, Māori development. Now, some of the mental health targets that are important that we're focusing on include uh, acute assessment. For non-urgent cases, we're looking to have 80% seen in the first three weeks and 95% seen in eight weeks. Another target we're focusing on is the post-discharge follow-up, and that target is 90% uh, in seven days. And to be fair, the OAG report did come out and say, look, we've got some work to do there. It wasn't quite where we wanted it to be, and so I want to talk about how we're applying ourselves to get there. In fact, the main finding of the OAG report was all around collaboration, particularly that primary to secondary care transition. I want to talk to each of these three appropriations in a bit more detail then. The $100 million to the DHB, well, what we've done here, the Minister has done, is make mental health a very clear priority. How do you do that? Well, you do that by setting out a letter of expectation to the DHB saying exactly that. Mental health is a high priority for this minister and for this government. What you also do is you make it a KPI reportable to the MOH's annual reports. That also focuses the attention of the DHBs. Inside of the social investment program, the $100 million that's being appropriated there, we have the National Depression Index which is an <coughs> IT-based model with two core websites and the National Telehealth Service wrapping around it. The service for youth is called the lowdown.co.nz and for adults, depression.org.nz. Now, technology is very important in some of the push into the mental health domain. We know from international jurisdictions that uh, people who have suicidal ideation and are feeling depressed, they're more inclined and more likely to deal with computerised interviews than with personal interviews. That's what the international space is telling us, but you know, some of our local researchers have also found that. Professor, Professor Felicity Goodyear-Smith from the Auckland Goodfellow Unit has an application called eChat, which uses iPads as a self-assessment tool in a waiting room to look at depression and other mental health illnesses. It's a wonderful project. She published it in JAMA, I think it was. And it's another good indication of technology being useful in this domain. I think the uh, second initiative inside the social investment program uh, rises from, well, comes from the uh, document Mental Health Rising to the Challenge, the 2012 document. And this outlined four key parts to a framework uh, around how we might address mental health. The first was activating our existing resources. I call it ABCD. B was building integration. Here we are again, coming back to that transition between primary and secondary care, covering high needs and uh, secondly, delivering increased access. So that's the second initiative. The third thing I wanted to talk to is the National Quality Improvement Program managed by the Health Quality and Safety Commission. 7.5 million over five years, reviewed in three years. And uh, they set themselves five priorities. Those five priorities are, firstly, uh, minimising restrictive care. And I'd note that the legislation we passed earlier this year, the Addictions Act, did exactly that. Secondly, maximising physical health. We can easily be distracted in mental health on the mental health issue. Let's remember they have other physiological conditions that are often distracted and need attention also. Improving medication management. It's always a challenge in mental health. When you're not at your best, you're more inclined to say, I don't need to take this medicine because I'm doing well, when in fact you may not be. Recording adverse events. And here we are again, their fifth priority improving service transitions. See, all the focuses across these frameworks are the really important integration uh, between services. So I think as we can see here, there's a number of initiatives at several levels, DHB level, at the social investment level, and haven't even and probably won't have time to speak to the, uh, the collaborations between MSD, corrections and Māori development, but I think we've made the point that we recognise the challenge of mental health, we're applying it, and here's actually what we're doing. Thank you, Mr Chair. Oh, well, we're bond.
Yeah. I'm, um, again, when you come down to the house, you can't...